So let us walk along the heavenly red carpet uh, for the coming weekend. And that's going to include the alignment of the potential fulfillment of the Swedish boy's vision. And this first uh, slide is about that potential fulfillment. We see the Northern Cross being raised up once more. This is really interesting. I didn't know it existed. There's a North American nebula right next to the capstone of the cross, the head star. And it is shaped just like the North American continent. It's going to be at meridian at its daily culmination at exactly 726. And at that time, that same line, that meridian line, will also mark the moon on its way from the cattle fold in Cancer to the head of the lion. So this is the alignment of uh, the Northern Cross. So at the time of the Swedish boy's vision, that is going to be raised up and the heavenly harp of David is playing, is shining its meteors right next to it. So at 726, the North American Nebula next to Cygnus is going to be at Meridian. The Northern Cross is a representation in the heavens, just like Orion's belt stars of the Giza Plateau. And that is the expected gathering place of the Lord's end times harvest. Harvester, sorry. So this is the depiction of the North American Nebula. And uh, at that same time, the sun is going to align with the star Hamal in the head of the lamb and of course this scene of the lord as the lamb that was slain with his face shining as the sun comes to mind so we have the bridegroom type the sun we have the forerunner mercury which is on its way back to the sun so mercury is going to go in retrograde motion and we have uranus the type of um uh, Uranus, the kingdom of heaven, but also of the Enoch type forerunners in the throne room. The sun is also going to align with Vesta, the type of the virgins, which is still in Cetus below. Oh yeah, this is where Vesta is still in the head of Cetus. The sun is in the constellation Aries. And Jupiter, the man-child, is still in Pisces. And that will, uh, planet will traverse the upright ribbon of Pisces, I believe, on the 8th. So that is also a bookend of what I believe to be uh, the liberation of those with a heavenly calling. The moon will be in the constellation Cancer, right above uh, Presepe or the M44 beehive cluster, the manger where the seed of Abraham is found. And she will then move forward on the ecliptic toward the scepter star of Leo. I think we're going to see that in the next slides. Yes. So on the 28th, the moon will traverse the asterism borders of Cancer into Leo and then move toward the tip of the sickle. So the head stars of Leo make up a sickle shaped asterism. And uh, the moon will be on its orbit to the Earth. Um, at the longest distance, so it will appear smaller than normal. And as the moon is approaching Leo's eastern gate, just like the eastern gate in Jerusalem, Ceres, uh, the asteroid denoting Jesus as the grain brought forth or the grain offering, is um, entering from Virgo into Leo at the Alpha and Omega border at the tail end of Leo. So this is where the chapter change between the final constellation and the first constellation is found. So I believe this could be that picture of the seed being in the barn. So we have the moon bride in the constellation that denotes the multitudes of Abraham's seed by faith and Ceres entering the constellation Leo. The first quarter moon, a type of division between light and darkness, is taking place at the same time. The uh, planet currently an evening star, Venus, uh, the beloved, is in between the horns of Taurus the bull, the Lord coming to both rescue and judge. 
and so is the asteroid Esther. She is aligned with the Pleiades, the representation of the seven churches in the heavens. Mars is in between the bride and the groom portion of the wedding cluster Gemini. Mars is associated with war and with the archangel standing up. So I believe that as we are traversing in this Jericho timeline of the first silent encompassing of the city and then on the last on the seventh day the city fell after they circled it for seven times and the trumpets were blown and the people shouted so that is also a picture of the last trump the moon will align with uh the scepter star the hard star of leo um, regulus on the 29th and on that same day, uh, we see the Comet E3 um, aligning with the star Rigel, the ninth hour star on the 24 hour clock of um, Giza of Orion um, with the head of the snake. So this star denotes the foot that is going to crush the enemy uh, below it, currently depicted as a hair, but biblically it is a snake. The comet is going to be in the head of the snake and align with the foot that is going to crush so regardless of the exact uh, time implication i believe this is a picture of the judgment by the lord on the head of the enemy will start at that time the moon will occult eta leonis or eta leonis in the uh, sickle of leo and Perhaps that is an indication of the bride of the Lord fetching the harvest sickle. So here we see that occultation in the afternoon. On April 30th, the asteroid Iris will be at opposition, meaning opposite the sun at its brightest in the year, um, near the constellation Libra, uh, Libra within the uh, borders of the constellation. That is where the the number of lunar eclipse is also going to take place at the end of the week. So the moon is going to pass this asteroid. And uh, in the Revelation 12 sign, when the moon was under the feet of Virgo, that was the confirmation of the redemption of the bride uh, being finalized. So that section in the heavens is an important section where we speak of redemption. So on May 1st, the comet E3 will align exactly with the middle of uh, Rigel, the foot that crushes, and Venus, the planet denoting the beloved, just like the David bride type, is going to align with a star that shares two constellations, both the northern uh, tip of the horn in um, Taurus, as well as the knee of Auriga, the charioteer. But that is not the only alignment. It's also going to align with Bellatrix. So that is the female warrior. So we have the evening star, current evening star, Venus aligning with Elnat, the picture of judgment and rulership, and with Bellatrix in the left shoulder of Orion. And that is the, um, the name means female warrior. So that is a promising sign uh, affirming this weekend's high watch when it comes to the heavens. So the explanation of the uh, Swedish boy's vision, this is what the elite were doing in during that wedding of William and Kate. So they were reenacting exactly what was happening in the heavens above them with the sun at Hamal, just like this weekend, and the moon moving onward on the ecliptic under the great square of pegasus and this is a picture of the cosmati pavement in westminster abbey which was modeled after this constellation so you can see the alignment of the bride walking on the scarlet red thread the ecliptic in the heavens meeting her groom on the great square of pegasus so they were reenacting the bridal redemption in the heavens because uh, the alignment of the bride 
was with the delta star in the constellation of this shackled princess. We're going to see that over here. So at the moment that she entered the uh, Westminster Abbey, the church, the moon was in the center of the great square and would later align at 12.12 with the queen constellation Cassiopeia through the delta star of Andromeda. So they were acting out the redemption, the unshackling of the now shackled princess uh, by the great ram, the lamb of God. So that's where they were not very modestly trying to emanate. The alignment of the sun with that same star will be on April 28th. And of course, this is not me uh, projecting forward of what will happen. I'm just uh, led to show you the uh, synchronicity with, with what we see in the heavens and what they were, I believe, trying to usurp at the time. So the sun aligning with Hamal, uh, seen from the ecliptic, at meridian, its highest point, it will align with the virgins, and the man-child is still in the constellation Pisces. And this is a star that is called Arisha. It's the bridal uh, or the... Uh, wedding knot star, so the tying of the knot is connected to this star that is denoting where the two fish are still bound to the sea monster, but they're also binding him. <laughs> and in the older depictions, you can see that the lamb has its front legs on the band. So he is the one who is both upholding believers, but he was also going to set them free at a certain point in time. So the moon entering the constellation Leo and touching the sickle while the sun is at Amal. And I believe that is a beautiful picture. So the what I believe to be the explanation of the 70 years of Babylon formally ending with the um, intended crowding of Charles and they associate themselves with the tribe of uh, Judah, uh, while um, that is inaccurate, you can look into the resources in the article that their claim is false. But nonetheless, they associate themselves with all kinds of biblical symbolism and holy oils and the stone of scone. Uh, but they're actually tramping on the legacy of the Lord. And uh, I think it's important to be able to pierce through what they're doing and actually expose it. So amidst these lovely, angelically looking faces, we have the former queen who ruled Babylon for 70 years. And as darkness is encroaching, here are some of the resources I spoke about to arm ourselves up. The heavenly signs for the first week of May, I'm not going to cover just yet. Um, auroras are on the rise. Uh, here you can track them yourself. And we know that the worldwide manifestation of both red sky, dazzling lights, auroras will be or will become the warning sign prior to the uh, upcoming Exodus plagues. You can read about that over here. And you can download this document also to serve as a witnessing tool for your loved ones, your family and friends in due time. But we can see the uh, prefiguring of this spreading phenomenon as we speak. And this is where I uh, share my own heart with regard to the application of the stories we see on the heavenly calendar for the coming week. So you can read that over here. And I found a couple of prophetic words by our sister Julie Wedby. And I very seldom recommend prophetic words. Um, but if I do, uh, like this time, I highly recommend for you to read them. And they have ministered to my heart and life uh, greatly. So here you can find the second Passover resources and other material with regard to the different topics that I just covered. This is where the account of David being strengthened is uh, shared and how and why he was operating directly under the Lord's command, just like Joshua was. 
So, our readiness to stand before the Lord, I believe that is to us the most important topics and trust in his finished work.